hi everyone, 3 d here, here and within today's video I'll be doing a canteen guide to where you can understand what the canteen has to offer and how to make good use of it and where to find more of the ingredients to make the perfect dish. The canteen is a encoring feature that's been around since the very first Monster Hunter and has always been a place of worship for many hunters before they head out to their hunts. As it allows players to receive buffs that can be lifesavers and last up to the end of the quest, till you faint or till you return to base. You can either eat at the main town canteen or at base camp and can eat again if you faint in battle at the base camp canteen. However, you can't do this until you either hit 10 minutes has passed or a notification tells you you can eat again, which in many ways tells you that 10 minutes has passed. So for Monster Hunter World, let me go through the main basics. You can pay for your food either by Zenny, Research Points or a voucher. If you use a voucher, not only will it let you get that food for free, but it also gives everyone else in the server a free meal as well, which is a nice little bonus that can save players from spending. And it's also something that I never realised until someone used a voucher in game, and then I realised my food was already paid for them. So if you have it, make sure you use it every now and then. You also have the choice to roast food that can give you either rations or even random items such as catalyst which can be mixed with all sorts of items in your crafting list. When you go into the meal list, you'll have some pre-created meals that you can choose and use on the get-go. Not all of these will have good bonuses active, but they still give you the required buff in health and stamina, depending on what is there to offer. Most players tend to pick the easy route of Chef's Choice Meal, which offers 50 health and stamina, a base stat buff and 3 random feline buffs that can be either good or bad depending on your setup. When you eat the meal, it also gives you a Perlico buff in health and stamina as well, which is also very nice and pleasant for doing solo content as well. Now, if you're someone like me and you like to experiment and you like to play around a bit, then you do have the option to create a meal of your own. But there are a few things you need to note before doing so. Within the ingredients list, each ingredient has two parts, the type and category. Each ingredient will either be a meat, a seafood, a vegetable or a drink. The more of the same type of ingredient you use in the meal, the higher bonus that you will get. Meats will give you a attack up bonus, seafood gives you a defense up bonus, vegetable gives you an elemental resistance up bonus, and drinks don't actually give you a base stat buff for what I've noticed, but it does give you a boost in stamina and a feline perk that focuses around getting more materials and zenny etc. Eating two of the same type will give a small boost as shown on the screen, eating four of the same type gives a medium, and eating six of the same type will give you a large, and also corresponds to the feline buffs you'll get if you stack them. Each day within a game, there will be a set of random basic feline skills made available to you. These will be randomly chosen each time you turn from a quest, and they will be replaced by special skills depending on the amount of ingredients that share the same category. So sometimes you may get one, sometimes you may get two, sometimes you may get three, but it's always going to be random, so you won't always get the same feline skills over and over again, unless that's what you're after. Each of the ingredients will fall under one of the five different categories. They don't quite have the names for these categories when you're picking your ingredients, as instead they have coloured icons. To find the categories' names, all you have to do is press the D-pad on the PS4, and you'll see the names of each ingredient category and feeling skills under them. While choosing ingredients, you can press the touchpad on the PS4 to see how many of each category you need in order to add that skill to the pool, and what they do. You can mix and match between different types of ingredients, so if you wanted the feline sharpshooter skill, then you will need at least two ingredients that are under the yellow category, like shown. If you have four though, it will change to the next skill available within the according colour, and so on. These three line skills are obtained at random based on the number of fresh ingredients available. These are indicated by the green sparkles around the presented ingredients, like shown. The more you use, the higher chance you might get one or more of these skills as shown on the presented buff. At the bottom of the screen, you can see a star bar that fills up and tells you the chances of getting a selected buff, which you want to aim for around 2-3 to three stars max to get to the selected buffs. Using fresh ingredients also increase your HP and your stamina and your Peligo health bar by a few points, so you can mix match to see which will give you the best option to run for within your hunts. At the same time, you can create a dish you like and save it for another time. However, if your list uses fresh ingredients and you won't use that dish again for another mission, then you can but the chances of activating that feline's buff, like last time, may be low, as the fresh ingredients always rotate. In many ways, you want to go and run optional quests that are delivery based, chef's quests, edemic life and fishing quests, and low and high rank gathering points quests ASAP, as will give you a higher chance of getting the ingredient type and category you want that will be fresh. Plus, 
You can create multiple dishes that are for the same buff, but with different ingredients, which increases your chance even more to use a specific dish for your loadout. But it's not guaranteed, it's just a simple way I've looked into it to increase the chances of trying to get that specific buff. Or you can use a voucher to pay for your meal, and you'll be guaranteed to get all three feline skills, regardless of how many fresh ingredients were you. This was something that even I didn't know about until I read it up on Reddit, which was quite surprising, but now that it's mentioned it, I know I can use my voucher a lot more. Now, you can achieve all of this within one playthrough, or take your time by doing optional quests that are food based, or probably the most easiest method that I found, the gathering point run with an expedition. This method will allow you to fill in half your ingredients list within at least 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how lucky you are. All you need to do is locate the unknown gathering points, and search them to get a few ingredients from them. They come in three tiers, common, rare and super rare. What you want to try and do is get the rare and super rare ones, as these here are 50-50 to come by, but the most rewarding. You'll know if you've received a rare or super rare one for your character's action, where a rare action is them finding something and shining in the light. A super rare action though, is them digging the first time, and then digging the second time, to then shining it into the light. You can also increase your chances even more by looking for the flourishing modifier as shown on the expedition map or investigation modifier, to which increase the chance of finding a rare point that may have an ingredient that could spawn there. You can use this setup I have on screen which focuses on getting as much resources as possible within the world, and you can play around with the weapon or decorations to your own liking if you don't agree with what I have. But this is what I currently run with and it has done me good, and that everyone is the end of that. I do hope this small but relatively simple guide on understanding the canteen and how to fill up the ingredients list has provided you with as much information as possible, so that now when you go in and you're about to go to a mission, you always think twice before leaving a mission and not go to the canteen and stock up first. Because honestly, the canteen is one of those staple examples in a game that if you don't go there and receive the necessary buffs, you will get slaughtered in most of your missions. So, if you did enjoy the video, then a like and a sub would be appreciated. If not, then a dislike, as I'll look over the video and I can see what I need to improve on in the near future. But once again guys, thank you all for watching, and I do hope to see you again soon.